Welcome back to another video update on the Comprehensive Counseling Initiative. I'm Matt Fleck, and this time uh, we are with uh, Stephanie, and Stephanie Reynolds is the College and Career Counselor at three schools, North Liberty Elementary, Walkerton Elementary, <laughs> and Uri Middle School. So some of you who are counselors can appreciate the um, spreading thin across multiple schools, but boy, I'm sure it isn't easy, Stephanie. So thank you for being with us. Oh, no problem. It's a pleasure. So we want to ask you to start off and tell us a little bit about what you're doing with the Comprehensive Counseling Model. Let's start with the, um, I actually was going to say with the Comprehensive Counseling Initiative. But let's go ahead and start with the model. Uh, what model are you using, Comprehensive Counseling Model, and, and how's your implementation going? Okay. Well, our counseling coordinator, Melanie Heiser, she's been with John Glenn School Corp for 30 plus years. And she's done a great job of setting up our program to reflect the ASCA model. So she's been she's done that for a long time. It's been like that. She also used the Indiana Universal um, Student Indicators and, of course, the ASCA mindsets and behaviors um, for students. So that's what we've been that for a long time. Okay. So you it was familiar to you, to you already, and so your implementation was already going forward when the yeah. CCI initiative started. Okay. This just adds to it being able to focus more on uh, the college and career readiness. Yeah. Fantastic. So you've probably given us a clue there. What are some of the strategies and activities that you chose for your comprehensive counseling initiative? Some of those that you're excited about? Well, you know, something that we really have tried to promote in the last three years, the grant is executive function skills with our academic and attendance coach with some of those kids that are at risk to help them at home and in the classroom. And then something I do on my all three schools is the college and career readiness piece. And so we meet with sixth graders, we meet with eighth graders, um, something we're doing with sixth graders is um, college or career cluster lessons in the classroom and connecting it to high school courses and career pathways so they get excited about middle school and high school. Uh, fun. So they get an overview of what the career clusters are, see which ones they may like, and then you tell them that there's courses that might be in the high school correlated to those career clusters. Yes. Yeah, we give them activities, hands-on activities for every cluster that they can um, get treats and rewards for doing. So they come up, they're very excited about showing us what they like to do, if they were good at it. And then we can connect that to John Glenn High School and what they could maybe take aviation. Maybe they want to do architecture. Maybe they want to do health sciences. We can connect that so they get excited all through and high school. That piece of getting them excited about high school and what they want to maybe possibly be interested in careers is so important. So I really credit you for that. And we may have to, we have to ask you to share some of those materials because I'm sure there's other schools that want to see what you're doing. And, and, you know, as we do in education, copy or duplicate or steal it from you. Oh, Hey, I'm happy to share. Not a problem. Wonderful. Tell us about, are there other initiatives that you are starting or initiating with the grant funding? Uh, yeah, we um, also um, meet with the eighth graders because, again, that middle school piece, when they become less engaged, we want to keep them engaged. And so I do a career assessment with my sixth and my eighth grade, and I meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. And with that, we also have career cafes at the seventh and eighth grade level. So we have community partners coming in and talking to our sixth graders once a month, and then our eighth graders do it all throughout the year, which is really cool. And tell me, what's that? So draw the picture of it. What is it in the cafeteria? What's, what's it look like? Tell us a little bit more. So the career cafes are really neat because they come in for about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, I have parents that volunteer, community partners, employers. Uh, they come in and they talk and then they have the students ask questions. And usually they're eating lunch or they're eating like a breakfast. We do it at breakfast time and we do it during lunch periods. And uh, it's just a time for them to connect with employers and learn more about things that they might not have thought about and some of the things that they are interested in. Huh, we do that all year, which is fun. Wonderful. So a big part of the Comprehensive Counseling Initiative is collecting data. How has that gone for you and uh, both successes and, and I don't know if there's been some challenges in collecting data. How does it work for you? You know, what? I we really love the data piece, actually. Um, really? I think we're finding out the more you use it, the better you can help your students and engage your families. So really, you know, you can't get better than having all these tech, the technology we have with Google Forms and the surveys and all this cool stuff we can use. So that's been pretty easy to access all of our families with those tools, and we've been using it. So I, I do want to ask you, because sometimes uh, it's asked in the fall reports as well, 
has there been any particular challenges or what, what's been the, the toughest part of this for you in the rollout of the initiatives, especially under the CCI grant? I think um, I think the big thing was for the tenants coach or the uh, academic coach and myself was finding time to convince people to fit us into the schedules because you know everybody's trying to get as much time as students as possible. Yep. And so getting us to fit in the schedules and then having students you know want to come see us after the first year now they request us to come <laughs> into the classroom they request the students want to come hang out with us so it's it took a little bit. But now we're um, past that, and they like seeing us. With working at three schools, I know you must be really good at prioritizing. Have there been some things that you've maybe had to say, we can't do as much over there because we really need to focus over here? You know, um, sixth grade, we do a little bit less uh, as far as meeting with them. We meet more with the middle school just because we know they're getting ready to meet. I help them with their grad plans. I help them with their course selections. Um, and this year we're helping them create a college career prep, a career prep class for next year, a nine week one for seventh and eighth grade. So we spend a little bit less time with the sixth grade that we'd like to, but, um, and spend it with the middle school, but we still try to balance out as much as possible. It sounds like if you have a career class, you're going to get some teachers involved in helping yeah. you with that guidance as well. Okay. Yeah. Good. Tell us about a community partner or partners that you're working with and how they've interacted with you in the schools that you work with. We have really enjoyed working out with a few new ones. Um, the Promise Marshall County Promise Foundation helping us to get families interested in college planning. That's been fun, getting those kindergarten families through third grade excited about saving, college saving plans. Yeah. Um, we like working with our chambers and our John Glenn Education Foundation. They help us with that community partner uh, networking, bringing them in to mentor and talk to our kids and then help us with the 21st Century Scholar Program, increasing those numbers. They have been great about that. Huh. Now, I have to ask, it's a timely question. Are you planning on doing anything different next year because of COVID-19 and some of the changes that might result from that? Well, you know, we are creating the class, the nine-week class, which is a little different at the middle school level. It used to just be like a 10-day enrichment class. It's going to be a nine-week course, um, so I'm going to help teach it and then hand it off to some other teachers. I think we're going to have, we've learned to use technology in the last few months. <laughs> I've created Padlet, I'm using Loom, you know, Google Classroom, Interactive Classrooms, you name it, we're using it to access and reach out to our students. So we're just going to keep doing the same thing we've been doing for the last two months. You know, it's funny to me when I hear people talking about how um, we're really going to have to be flexible now and really going to have to change what we're doing. I always think as school counselors, <laughs> aren't you always going, OK, we got to move over here. No, no, we have to shift over here. So I think uh, if anyone's prepared for it, usually counselors or social workers are really well prepared. Yeah, we are used to go on with different schedules, adapting, <laughs> learning new things, because, you know, with kids, you want to try to keep up with keep their you know attention and help them understand and the, and teaches them better in different teaching styles. So we're always adapting and learning new things. So yeah, experts at that. Yeah. yeah. Sustainability is a primary component of the comprehensive counseling initiative. Tell us about maybe some of the activities you're doing in regards to sustainability, uh, not just monetarily, but in, in other ways. Well, you know, this is a, that's a tough subject because we know that with everything going on right now, next year, there may be some budget cuts. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with that, but I do know that our school really values our counseling team, and they know that, especially for that transition next year, we're going to have to have an effective team. That's going to be really, really important. Um, so I know that the things we're doing, I think the transitioning to the prep class is one of those things that's going to help sustain it. I think the things that we've created at the elementary school level with our lessons, we've made it so teachers can input it without me even being there if need be. So we try to make it so it can be very flexible on who does it, when, and where. Yeah. How about sustaining these projects and initiatives and strategies past the, the duration of the grant period when the, technically the money runs out? Will you be able to keep them in place? That's the goal. I mean, I know that we keep adding things to our activities every single year. So I know that both the elementary school and the middle school, and we're also helping the high school in the last few years, We've helped them revamp their career class. We're working with their career aid, develop their position. So I know they like what they're seeing, especially at the high school level. Yeah. So 
I think as long as we keep plugging away and keep adding things that are going to add value to the high school, seeing that effect go up, they're going to do their best to keep it from what I know of at this you, time. You're doing a, a true K-12 college and career readiness framework, which is yeah. to your credit. That's great. Can you share any wisdom that you have or maybe a resource that you would suggest to other school counselors, maybe at the elementary or middle school level or any thoughts on that? You know, some of the things that I've really loved using is um, the career, um, the Pearson career decision making assessment that we use with the sixth and eighth grade. That has created such a great dialogue with families and students and counselors and teachers. That's really been a great piece. Um, ASCA, I, lo I do the webinars, I do the specialist training, I did the college admissions and the um, career development specialist training, because they can do that, that was very helpful. Huh. And um, the IYI conference, if you can do that, network and get ideas, that's always been a great help to us. Is that the one that's the, the summer conference, the conference yeah. college and career readiness? Great ideas for that, always. Yeah, exactly. And I think they're doing something new this year, which uh, I, I don't know if the information is out yet, but we're we're helping in the background a little bit with that too. So it should be an exciting way to accommodate all of the new changes that are coming down with uh, the pandemic. Definitely. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're doing wonderful there. Any, any other items that we didn't ask you about that you really think, think are going well or a story you want to relate to us about how the initiative has been working and playing out at your schools? Well, you know, I love the initiative and especially the college and career piece because we've been able to help families and even teachers and staff realize that it's not just about finding a career. It's about helping them figure out who they are, who they want to be, what their purpose is, and, you know, engaging them with the practicality of school right now in their life and yeah. where they will be in the future. So I love the initiative and how, it allow, how it's allowing us to do that for kids. It's awesome. I'm excited about it for you. I'm excited about it for your kids. I mean, I think that's the true meaning of getting kids college and career ready. If you got them motivated and excited about their futures, you've, you've won most of the battle there. So the rest kind of comes after that. <laughs> True. Oh, definitely. It's fun. It's the, I have the best job. I, hands down, I think I have the best job. That's wonderful. Stephanie, I know it's been brief, but we really appreciate you taking the time. I, we had to work. I know this a couple of times to get the recording to work out and the technology, always technology, but uh, always. it's understandable with everybody going virtual. So thanks for your patience and good luck with the rest of your comprehensive counseling initiative. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.